Good morning, church. Thank you, praise team. Now, what were we talking about? Something about family? Was that it? Right? We looked at scriptures about children. We looked at uh, 1 Corinthians 11 with uh, headship. Remember that? A couple of weeks in that chapter. And this morning, we're, our focus is, go, is uh, going to be on husbands and wives, uh, roles and responsibilities of husbands and wives. And we'll be centering out of Ephesians chapter 5 for a while, this week and next week. Well, there'll be some other scriptures to, to look at, but basically, um, Ephesians chapter 5. What a great group in a balcony up there. Hi, guys. <laughs> Dan, is that your section up there? Okay, yeah. Thank you, Lord. This stuff's especially for you guys. Okay, husband and wife stuff, your day's coming. Right, kids? <laughs> Amen. There are a lot of forces that's battling against the family and battling against marriage nowadays, aren't there? A lot of forces. And the family is the foundation of the church and society. Again, we've brought this up before. So when uh, Satan can tear apart families and weaken families, then he's weakening churches and he's tearing up society, the community, our culture, our communities. Oh, there are forces even inside the church that the enemy is using. And we know that there's plenty of forces outside the church causing divorce, uh, dispersing families so they're not close to each other anymore. Or sometimes uh, these forces are causing families to be so busy that it's almost like busy strangers just seeing each other once in a while back at the house. Hmm. Some of the forces within the church we ought to understand from being United Methodists uh, with the special general conference that was just called with, with uh, discussing uh, the definition of marriage and and uh, a, a uh, group, some groups in the church wanting to change that definition, what the Bible clearly says, battling uh, and hurting and harming families. And of course, there's all those forces outside the church that are tearing, tearing at, at families that the enemy's using. Um, all you got to do is, is go to school somewhere nowadays, and, and if, if you've grown up if you're not getting fed from the Word and in the church, I guarantee you there is so much out there that is coming against the family, so much deception, so, much, so many lies out there that if you're not feeding yourself regularly in the Word of God, Bible study, and Sunday worship, if you're not feeding yourself, they will convince you. Because that's mostly what you're feeding yourself with. So it isn't any wonder that you start believing like the world around us. <clears throat> and what does that do to the family? It's going, it'll tear it up. That, that's the enemy. He'll get in and do his thing. What did uh, what Jesus say about uh, the devil? He came to do what? Kill, steal, destroy. And he knows what he's doing. He's been at it a long time. So you and I must continue to come back to God and what he has said so that we can find where he places blessings and where he puts protection, where, where he can strengthen families and, and, and use them uh, for the intentions that he uses them for, for good. Trouble is, you see, most, of, most people have forgotten and forsaken the godly structure 
of marriage. That's what we're going to be looking at today in the next week or two. Let's pray. Father God, we're, we just pray that you who created marriage, you who created the family, that you would speak your word, your words of life to the different roles and responsibilities of, of husbands and wives, these roles and responsibilities uh, that, that make the marriage work well work the way you created it to work, the only way it'll really work. And we're asking you, Lord, to use this series and these scriptures, your word, to strengthen our marriages, to guard our families, to make us examples to the world of, of what love and life really is. Now, please, Lord, don't leave me up here by myself. Please give me the anointing of your spirit so I can faithfully teach your word through Jesus Christ. And God's children said, amen, amen. amen. So has God changed the family order throughout the centuries? Has he changed it? No, nope, he hasn't changed it one little old lick, has he? Not a bit. <clears throat> As I said, we're in Ephesians chapter 5, is our, our basis for teaching here. And verse 17, let's start there. God has not changed the order for the family. So, verse 17, don't act thoughtlessly about how you're going to organize, run, order your family. But, but understand what the Lord wants you to do in ordering your family and ordering your marriage. Understand. Now that usually means it's going to take a little digging. It's going to little, take a little seeking. It's going to take some effort. Understand. Because Psalm 127 Verse 1 says, shares this truth, unless the Lord builds a house, a home, it says in some translations, unless the Lord builds the home, the work of the builders is wasted. And that's what most people are doing today, wasting uh, the, uh, their family and what their family could be and what it could be accomplishing unless the Lord builds the home. So, Lord, that's what we want. Show us how to build a home, how to build marriages, how to build a family. The only way they can find uh, true success there, true fulfillment, is with you, Lord. Now, some people would look at the different roles and responsibilities given about husbands and wives as uh, commands. I don't think that's the way we should approach what God has to say about the different roles and responsibilities of husbands and wives. How about we look at these scriptures as, as us asking God for advice. Lord, give me some wisdom on how to love my wife, how to order my wife. Give me some counsel. Give me some help, Lord. How about we approach these scriptures in that way? Lord, help our marriages. Help our families. I think that's the right way to come here. Because without his help, hmm, <clears throat> Scripture actually tells us what love is. I thought I knew what love was, but I did not know what love was until I got saved, until God started showing me what love was. A lot of people think they know uh, what a marriage is supposed to be and what love is going to act like in a marriage. Well, 
apart from God, they don't know because there's so much selfishness, so much uh, personal desire, so much worldly ways, so much of the old fallen nature. There's so much of, of, of that going on that there's no way they could really understand love apart from the one who is love. And that is God. God is love. <clears throat> so when we look at scriptures that tell us about the different roles of responsibilities uh, uh, between a husband uh, and a wife, we're really looking at how love acts and what love does and what love does not do in the marriage relationship. So when God says, here's what the man is supposed to be doing, here's what the wife, here's what she majorly takes care of, then we're seeing how love acts. Here's what love does. God defines love for us. Do you believe that? Or are you going to still be ruled by feelings? <laughs> nope, we can't do that. Follow your heart. That's a commercial that's popular in, uh, uh, for, um, uh, for our hospital now, for the Cleveland Clinic. It says, follow your heart. Is one that is so wrong. We follow the heart, we're going to get in trouble. That's our feelings. You know how feelings go, right? Like this. They're up and down and all over the place. Nope, we follow the Lord, don't we? Amen. So, Scripture tells us how love acts in a marriage. Um, um, by the way, those of you who are single... Some of you are thinking, well, I'm not married. <clears throat> I'm not married, so <clears throat> I can nap today. Besides, I missed an extra hour of sleep last night. <clears throat> well, God has given you influence with other people, single people. He has, hasn't he? He's given you influence with them. You do have influence with others, and, and especially young people. So, so, as God gives you these truths, you need to be willing to share and to help the marriages that are around that God puts you around in life. So, single people, pay attention also. Let's start with the general foundation for marriage. And that is stated in Ephesians 5:21. Let's start there. And further, Submit to one another out of fear for Christ. This is the general foundation for marriage, and it is mutual submission. Do you see that in this verse? Submit to one another. Mutual submission. That's where um, the husband and wife have a heart that wants to meet the needs of their mate, that wants to meet the desires of their mate. I know what your desires are, sweetie, and I want to be a part of, of you getting your desires fulfilled, as long as they're godly desires, of course. Um, that's, that's a submissive attitude. What do you want? That's what love does. It looks at the other one first. And you have needs and desires, and love says, I want to be used of God to fulfill those. That's a submitting one to another. That's the foundation of, of the marriage. For example, before you were married, those of you who are or have been, before you were married and uh, you started going out with the person who would be your spouse later on, <clears throat> you had, we guys, when we were going to spend an evening with this woman that we're looking at for possibly uh, being a mate later on, we weren't thinking, now I want to go to the ball game, I'll take her to a ball game. I think I'd go, like to go fishing, so let's go fishing tonight. No, I think I'll go golfing, so maybe she can drive the cart. You know, it's, that's not how we approached it before we were married, was it? We were thinking... What would she like to do, right? Where would she like to go? And if we go to the movies, 
what kind of movie would she like? Oh, I could put up with a love story if she'd like it, you know, so just so she likes. Isn't that way it was? See, that's that submissive attitude, wanting to please the other, wanting to meet the desires of the other. The thing is, after we get married for a while, that old me focuses, focus comes back in there, and we forget about that, how it used to be and how it's supposed to be. <clears throat> Reminds me of those uh, um, dating sites, and you'll ask, well, how do you, what are you doing looking on a dating site? <clears throat> but, but I've seen them. <laughs> I knew he was going to think that anyway, so I might as well throw it out there. But uh, I, I, was, uh, I was looking at a dating site for somebody on a Christian site. One, well, you know what they ask on there? He said, here's what I like to do. So these people, these single people are going on there and saying, I like to do this. I like to, I like to hike. I like to go out to eat. I like to watch old movies. I like, I like, I like. And what are they looking for? Someone who's going to do what they like. That's not that submissive attitude. That's not love looking for someone. And so you end up two people out there looking for someone that will do what they like, and they're already battling over who's going to be the head, and they haven't even matched up with anyone yet. <laughs> what a great foundation for a relationship that is, huh? Yeah. See, us guys, we guys, we, we want to have, God wants us to have such a strong desire to submit to her, to please her, such a strong desire that it'll be greater than any other desire we have except for the desire to please, to please God. And when both the man and the woman, when they love like this, and, and they have this um, mutual submission, one for another, wow, what a relationship it ends up being. Amen. That's called a yielding spirit, where one spouse desires to yield to the other instead of battling over what I want. A yielding spirit. And it should show up in the decisions area of the family, of the marriage. You know, there's a lot of decisions you have to make together. You should be making together. And this yielding spirit will, will just change how, how decisions are made uh, between the couple and as a couple. Now, throw that scripture back up again, Ephesians 5, 21. We can't miss something here, and that's at the end of the sentence. And it says, submit to one another out of fear for Christ. Or in some translations it says, out of fear of Christ. Submit out of fear of Christ. That has a twofold meaning. If I should shirk or avoid my marriage responsibilities as a, as a husband, if I should avoid those that God gives me, and my marriage fails either by divorce or just never becoming anything close to what a loving relationship ought to be, two things will happen here. Fear of Christ. I will suffer. If I shirk my responsibilities as a husband, I will suffer. Jesus will make sure I suffer, see. Fear of Christ, what Christ might do or not do for me. So if I want to avoid my responsibilities as a Christian husband, then I must realize I will suffer. Now the second meaning that we see in this statement, out of fear of Christ, is that if I shirk my responsibilities then Christ's name will suffer. See, one of the major purposes for a Christian marriage is that the relationship between a husband and wife 
is to be an example, a reflection to the rest of the world and to immature Christians of what the relationship of Jesus Christ and the church is like. Did you know that? Number one purpose of marriage is to reveal the relationship of Christ and the church through the husband and the wife and how they love and, and how they operate. <clears throat> so, if I shirk my responsibilities and my marriage starts failing, unbelievers see it, others in the church see it, younger, the younger people see it, and they're all thinking, well, here you are a Christian, and look what's going on with your marriage. And the name of Jesus Christ will suffer. You with me, church? See, so we learn to, we want to submit to one another out of fear of Christ. There are consequences if we don't fulfill these roles and responsibilities. <clears throat> Another perspective here is uh, there are some couples who are so devoted to each other that um, the basis of their submission to one another is simply and only for one another and leaving Jesus out of it. So, so a husband um, so in love with his wife, building his life so much around his wife, submitting to his wife will be troubles eventually because at times he gets upset with her. If he's upset with her and he's submitting just because of her, then when he gets upset, then he won't submit to her. See? The point here being this, out of fear of Christ, you, um, you're doing this because of Jesus, not because of her, m more so because of Jesus than her. And that way, even when you get upset with her, you'll still submit because you're doing that for Jesus and out of fear for Jesus. I hope that came across. If not, I think as we discuss some more things, you'll see the principle coming out. <clears throat> the major focus in the relation, relationship, the wife has a major focus in what she needs to do for the husband, and the husband has a different major focus in what he must do for the wife. If you get nothing else out of today's message, get this next point, these next two points, if you will. The major focus, okay, here we go. And don't ever forget these. Please, these are, this, is, this truth is that important. Don't ever forget what I'm going to share next. The major focus for the wife is shared in uh, 522, verse 522. For the wives, that mutual submission, this means your part, wife, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. So what are they supposed to do? Submit, right? That's the, that's the verb here. Submit. Now, if I would jump down to the end of this teaching, clean down to verse 33, he ties it all up and repeats again what he started out with at the start of the teaching. And he says this in verse 33, And the wife must respect her husband. Now, I only went ahead to look at this. The word submit and respect are the two words that are interchangeable here for the major focus for the wife toward the husband. She is to submit or respect, same thing. Respect him, all right? That's the major focus of the wife toward the husband. She must show respect for him. Okay, now what about the husbands? What's his major focus toward the wife? This is uh, verse 25. Let's take a look at that. For husbands, this means, this mutual submission, your part in 
submitting husbands. For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. So, what's the verb here? The husband's got to concentrate on, focus on, the major focus is he must, yeah, he must show love to her. That's his major focus in their relationship. Guys, you've got to show love to her. <clears throat> Why? Both, both of these focuses. Because that's what the other one, listen, that's what the other one needs the most. That's what God says. That's what He created. That's how, that's the marriage relationship. It's built in there. God did this. See, the other person needs this the most. So, the wife needs to feel loved to find fulfillment in marriage. Absolutely necessary. She needs, now, some women go after that in strange ways. I know that. <laughs> We're going to look at God's way. But the basic focus here is still for us guys. She needs to feel loved in order to find fulfillment in this marriage. So, hubbies, you must do and say things regularly to let her know that you love her. Regularly saying things and doing things to let her know that you love her. Reminds me of this old couple I heard about. They were a retired couple They're sitting out on the porch at the end of the day and they both were, had rocking chairs and sun was going down over the, over the hill just a beautiful evening and the robins and cardinals, the, you know, the last bird songs of the day are there singing away and she's rocking there and she's looking at the sunset, hearing the birds, looks at her husband over there and she gets moved emotionally. And, uh, and, and she says to him, honey, you don't, you don't tell me you love me. You, you don't say that or nothing. And he's rocking away and he looks over her and he says, he says, when we first got married, I told you I loved you, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> that won't get it, Mike. <laughs> that won't get it, Mick. It doesn't get it, does it, guys? No. Nope. She's got to know regularly. So, an example would be how you show that. How do you do that, guys? An example would be you must get alone with her sometime. I don't care if you have 18 kids. You still need to get alone with her sometimes in a setting like you wanted to get in before you were married. A romantic time, personal time. You and her alone. That's just an example. You've got to do that. You need to set that time aside. Guys, when's the last time you did that? so that you could use that alone time to show and tell her how much you love her, how much she is loved. <clears throat> okay, wives, the husband needs, see, she needs the love, right? Number one, the husband needs to feel what? Respected. In order to find fulfillment in the marriage, he needs to feel respect from his wife. So the wife must do and say things often that shows that she truly respects him. An example, um, Becky and I have been married 45 years now. It'll be 46 here coming up in May. And throughout our marriage, um, years, she has consistently fixed meals for me. And I don't take that for granted. She fixes meals. She feeds me. And that makes me feel important. That Becky makes a point 
of making sure I get fed. Now she, some of the foods I like, she's trying to cut out of my diet, but I know it's because she loves me. <laughs> <clears throat> but to me, she's showing respect for me by, by making sure to feed me every day, providing me meals every day. Thank you, Beck. <clears throat> when you see a marriage in trouble, these are the first things to look for. You're going to find out she's not showing him respect anymore, or, and, he's not showing her that he loves her. And he's not telling her. Hmm. These two areas also help them fulfill their God-given roles. Now listen to this. And it's just common sense. Listen to this. Husbands need that respect in order to be good leaders in the family. To be a good head in the family. Doesn't that make sense? Common sense? He's going to feel more like a good leader. And he'll do a better job of leading if she is showing him respect. In fact, sisters, can I tell you how important it is, your part in making him a good leader in your home, in your relationship? You play an extremely important part there. When you do show that respect, and it's consistent, his response will be, I want to be a better leader, because she respects me. I don't want to let her down. You play an extremely important role there. That just, doesn't that sound like common sense? Okay, how about the other side of things? And wives need to be loved in order to better support their husbands. If a wife feels loved by him, she knows he's, his love, she's getting his love, then she will quite naturally respond to that by submitting to him better. Does that make sense? Isn't that just common sense? And yet, we don't think about it. We, we forget about that. So, um, that's part of what, that's part of the, here's what the other needs uh, the most. Now, now again, you're never, never going to forget this, ever, are you? What does the wife need from the husband more than anything else? What does the husband need from the wife more than anything else? Amen. Amen. Pass that on, will you? Will you make sure your kids know that, and the grandkids know that, and your friends know that, and the younger couples in the church know that, and the newlyweds know that? Don't ever forget that. <clears throat> the relationship between Christ and the church gives wives the best example of how to show respect. Verse 22, for wives, this means submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Most translations put the word own, your own husbands. You're not sp submitting to somebody else's husband or, s or some other guy in your life. You know, some fella at the job who gives you more attention than your husband does. That's not who you're, <laughs> nope. Submit to your own husband as to the Lord. What, what, what's this saying? As to the Lord. So you submit to your husband, your own husband, as a devotion to the Lord. I'm going to restate it again. As a devotion to God, submit to the husband. Not as a devotion to the husband, because again, you're going to be upset with him sometime, sooner or later. 
and you're not going to feel like submitting to him. But if you submit to your husband as a devotion to God, no matter how he acts, you're still going to be consistent. Now, let's look at uh, how, ladies, how do you submit to Jesus? This will help, help you see how to submit to the husband. Remember, you're doing this out of a devotion for God, right? You're not more than anything else. You're submitting to Him because of Jesus. So, ladies, how... Think back to when you were first born again, and you started making Jesus, you know, your Lord. How did that change things? Didn't you learn to adapt yourself to Him, to Jesus, right? As you, as you made Him your Lord? And, that's number one. Number two, and didn't you start to order your life around Jesus' life? Right? Instead of your job or your kids or your whatever it was before. Now you, you order your life around Jesus' life. Right? Number two. And when you made Jesus Lord, what else did you do? You learned to be dependent on Him, just like you are now, right? Isn't that who you really depend on when it gets down to it? You have learned to be dependent on Jesus Christ Himself. So there's the three things you do when you made Jesus your Lord and your relationship to Him. That is how you are to submit to your husband as a devotion to God. You adapt to your husband, you adapt to Him. Number one, just like you, you have to Jesus. Number two, you order your life around your husband's life, just like you have for Jesus. And number three, you learn to be dependent on your husband, just like you have Jesus. And God's order in no way undermines the woman's personal relationship with Jesus, but enhances that relationship. Now, why do you do this? Because it's what pleases Jesus. It's a devotion to Him. That's why you're submitting to the husband. It's out of devotion for Him. You do it because it pleases Him. Is this coming across? Becky, if I'd give her the mic now, and maybe I should have done this, um, in our growth, in our relationship as husband and wife, I messed up so much <laughs> that uh, she found it hard to submit to me, to have that submissive attitude. What turned the corner and made it more possible was when she started thinking of it this way. It says, I'm submitting Mick out of a devotion to Jesus. So really I'm submitting to Jesus by submitting to Mick. Jesus is first in this thing. That's how I can do it. That's why I do it. In all three of those areas that we just mentioned. Because you're doing it because that's what pleases Jesus, see. That's what Jesus says works in the husband and wife relationship. You want to come up with your own plan? I guarantee you, you are in deep doo-doo. And we've got examples all over the place. Remember, we're asking, we're asking the Lord for advice here, aren't we? Help me, Lord, to have a good relationship with this person, right? In marriage. And that's what He's doing right now. If we'll just believe His Word, trust His Word. <clears throat> All right, we're going to cut right here, but I've got a lot more. Uh, we're going to go back and forth on, on the roles and responsibilities of the husband and the wife in the uh, next Sunday or two. Would you bow your heads with me a moment? And 
Would you look at God with your spiritual eyes as your heads are bowed? Would you look at God? Would you listen to him? What's he saying to you right now? Does it have to do with these major areas, these major focuses? For us guys, have we really been showing our women that we love them? Have we? We've been doing a, God, a good job of sticking our hearts out there toward them, giving them the priority in life that we should be giving them. They need that love from us. Guys, have you been doing that well? Do you need to repent for any weak areas there in your past? Would you like God to give you some, some grace, some ideas, some help in showing that love to your wife? If you would, would you just raise a hand, fellas? Raise a hand. By raising that hand, you're, you're allowing God to pour grace into you. You're telling him you want help. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, use me as a vessel to love my wife. Pour your love in and through me to my wife so that she'll know she's loved. Help me, Lord, and help our marriage. Strengthen it in Jesus' name. And wives, have you been showing him the respect that God says you're to show him? Have you adjusted your life to him? Boy, that's respect. And if not, well, I know no one's here's done it perfectly. Would you just Ask God to forgive you and your shortcomings in this area. And if you want some help from God in showing respect to your husband, would you just raise your hand up and say, Lord, give me grace. Give me help, Lord. Give me counsel. Give me wisdom. Give me the right heart. Help me to love him, Lord, to respect him and to show that respect. In Jesus' name. Strengthen our marriages. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's go to the prayer tablet. Cameron Tamakis is, is uh, using his spring break to minister in New York City with Campus Crusade for Christ. We want to lift up him and the others that are doing that, giving themselves for the cause of Christ. We pray a wonderful, powerful anointing upon them to share the gospel, to share your love, to share your truth, and also protect them, Lord. Give them fruit through their labors. In Jesus' name. Father, we have a praise to you uh, for John's surgery going so well. Thank you, Lord. Send, giving the praise to where it belongs with you. Dave Meyer's brother will have sh shoulder surgery on March 21st. Give him success in that, Lord. Uh, the family of Arlene Wallach, Sister Arlene, who's, who's a part of our church family here. Arlene has passed, passed on to be with Jesus. So we lift her family up. We pray for comfort for them. We pray for peace between them and between them and you, Lord. And we pray for the salvation of those family members who are headed down. Save them, Lord. We ask your anointing upon Arlene's service here at this church at 11 o'clock Thursday morning and upon the meal that follows. Lord, please use this time for their good. We have prayers 
lifted for Jennifer Wyland and, uh, and Dawn's on the first anniversary of her husband Ryan's departure uh, to heaven. Again, Father, you're the great comforter, your spirit. Turn this and use it for good for them, Father. Help them. We continue to pray for success for, for Manny's procedures and the procedure he has coming up tomorrow. We are asking you, Father, to put your anointing and your extra skills upon the surgeon and, and the assistants and the anesthesiologist and the nurses, all who are a part of that, Let them be your tools to take care of Manny. Thank you, Father. Guard him and, and, and make, him, make him well, Lord. Thank you. And we, we pray for everything to go well for Wayne Berkey as he goes through the process of getting a heart valve replaced. And Wayne's at... Uh, Cleveland Clinic right now. I pray for peace for he and Ruth and the, and the family and, the, and for the rest of us who love Wayne so dearly. And we pray for wisdom, Lord. We pray for your spirit to be uh, over and above everything and, and for them to know your presence with them. We pray for success. We're asked also to pray for the for the family uh, star people who went to be with our Lord Jesus Christ Thursday morning. Yes, Lord, show yourself on their behalf. Be what they need now in the midst of this trouble. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Brothers and sisters, would you listen to the Holy Spirit now as we ask him to lay, to lay on our minds who and what you want us to pray about so that you can use our prayers to bring about your will. So whatever the Holy Spirit or whoever he's led, that's being led, uh, has been laid on your mind now, whisper, whisper prayers. out loud, soft, and gentle prayers. In the powerful, loving name of Jesus, we pray. And the believers said, Amen. Amen. All rise.